Welcome to my video on the looming threat of a banking crisis and the possibility of a recession. As the world continues to grapple with rising interest rates and out of control inflation, many economists are warning that a financial crisis may be just around the corner. In this video, we'll take a closer look at some of the top banks that are reporting earnings in the next week to better assess our risks and see if any banks make sense as a potential investment. The article 12 charts show a global recession has already begun and how investors can protect their portfolios suggests that a global recession has already started. There is a significant decline in manufacturing activity, trade, and global GDP growth. And a great indication for the overall market health will start on Friday when the big banks start releasing their Q1 earnings reports. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the fundamentals of the banking stocks to see if we should be worried. But before we cover today's stocks, I want to go over one of my trade alerts from this week to show you what we're doing and how we're making money. On Monday, we sold the Crocs out of the money cash secured $119 put at $1. So that means we were paid $1 per share, $100 per contract. Our expiration was just on Friday, which is April 14th. Our delta was negative 0.25. What does that mean? Well, the delta is roughly the percent odds that that price will be hit. So we've got about a 25% chance that this stock will be assigned to us and a 75% chance of just keeping the profit. This is a wheel strategy, step one, and then our annualized ROI, if the put is not executed, would be a 76.7% ROI on our money, which is phenomenal. Our break-even price is $118. Our maximum profit is the opt our maximum profit is the option premium and then risk, high advanced strategy. I label this as an advanced strategy because you have to have the cash if you are put the position. But the reality is I'm doing cash secured puts and willing to buy the stocks for the strike price. So the risk is actually low since I am happy to own the stock. And then I got a note down here for small accounts and this is really important. You can turn this into a bull put credit spread by purchasing a put with a slightly lower strike price. This will put a cap on your profits and limit your risk and make it small account friendly. And then just an update for you, after two days, we are currently up 77% and you can take profits anytime. Now let's take a look at the chart and I'll show you a few more things. We're now looking at the six month chart on Crocs and a couple of things to point out. They've got a net income margin of 15.2%, which isn't too bad. They've got a revenue growth forecast of 12.5%. And I've covered these guys in recent videos. I like Crocs fundamentally, a good strong stock. The shoe is butt ugly, would never want to wear a pair, but the company itself I like. Now looking at the chart here, we can see for the last three months, they've kind of been range bound and they've got resistance right around $129. And then they've got support down here right around, we'll just call it 116, 117 uh, to make it quick and easy. And then I sold the 119 and I picked up a dollar. The other thing we've got is this yellow line right here. This is called the point of control. And this tells us where most of the volume has been on the stock, which tells us where the big money has positioned themselves. And this is coming in right around 120 or $121. So I feel really good picking up the stock anywhere below that. And with this range, that's why I'm more than happy to sell a cash secured put right down here at $119. Great positioning. And if I get put the stock, no worries because I wouldn't be surprised to see it go right back up here and catch this resistance. If it breaks it, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. But we can make money playing this range up and down and that's what we've been doing. And this is just one of the types of trades we do in my Discord. This is what we do in my private Discord, and if you want all of our trading alerts and help from our awesome community, then join us in Discord. I really believe we've got one of the best Discords out there, and if you'd like to join our exclusive group, the link is in the description below. We're now at beastmodeanalysis.com and if you want to run your own side-by-side -side analyses, just check out that website. Okay, first up, we're looking at JP Morgan Chase, ticker JPM, and this is the largest bank in the U.S. based on the market cap. Then we've got Wells Fargo Company, WFC, Citigroup, ticker C, Schwab, 
ticker SCHW, M&T Bank, MTB, and Service First Bank, SFBS. And all of these guys are reporting earnings in the next week. Looking at the PE ratios, we can see they're coming in between 6.1 and 12.5, so all relatively low. And then on our PS ratio, our lowest on the day is going to be Citigroup at 1.2. And a few things I want to point out. First, the beast mode is color-coded, where the most important thing in any section is going to be the light blue color. So that would be the PE ratio for stock performance. And the second most is going to be the PS ratio. And you can also see we've got up and down arrows. And that tells us if we're looking for a low or a high score. And if you need to know what anything means, just hover over that little eye and a pop-up comes up. And here you've got a long definition and example of a PE ratio and how to use it. So this helps you go through the stocks fundamentally and pretty much can teach you basic fundamental analysis on stocks. Next up, we've got the income statement, and this tells us whether or not the companies are making money. And you're going to notice we've got a bunch of NAN values, and that's because this type of a stock, a financial one, is not required to report these items in their financial statement. So let's drop all the way down here to the net income margin. We can see JP Morgan is 29.28, nice and strong. Wells Fargo, 17.86, the low on the day. Citigroup, 19.71%. Charles Schwab, 34.59% beautiful for them. M&T Bank, 24%, and then SFBS, the smallest bank on the day, coming in at 51% and is the highest as well. Let's take a look at the per share data, and this allows us to compare important per share data between companies. And what I want to focus on in this section is going to be the EBITDA per share ratio. And if you need to know what that is, hover over it. And EBITDA is essentially the net income or earnings with interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization added back. EBITDA can be used to analyze and compare profitability among companies and industries as it eliminates the effects of financing and capital expenditures. And what I want to point out here is we've got a clear winner, and that is Citigroup coming coming in at 0.25, where everybody else is about 10 to 15 points lower. The balance sheet tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable. And if we look at the tattle ratio, which compares the total assets to the total liabilities, all of these are banks and would expect them all to be similar. And they're all coming in right about 1.1. So nothing jumps out there and that's okay. Moving on down the page, let's look at the key performance metrics. And these are all very insightful to a company's overall condition. So for revenue growth last year, our winner here was M&T Bank at 36.49%. Coming in at number two was SFBS at 21%. 1.3%. And then our laggard here is going to be WFC. They actually lost ground and had a negative 6% growth. And one other thing to point out, these companies have a massive size difference with JPM being the biggest and SFBS being the smallest by a huge margin. And it's a lot easier to grow smaller banks than it is bigger banks. Next up, we've got the free cash flow margin and JP Morgan comes in as the clear winner at 83%. But we've got a couple of other real strong ones, M&T Bank and SFBS. And if you needs no free cash flow margin. This simply measures a company's ability to expand its business and pay returns to shareholders using only the money generated through cash operations. Now we've had some real banking problems lately, but if you've got a huge free cash flow margin like JP Morgan, that means you've got plenty of money coming in and you can easily pay the bills. So the ones that's actually the scariest right here in this group would be Charles Schwab because they're at 5.23%. Now realize this doesn't take into account their cash reserves that they have and this is just one part of the overall picture that we're looking at. Next up, we've got the rule of 40 indicator. This is something that I like to look at. Coming in very strong here are M&T Bank at 89%, SFBS at 76%, and also JP Morgan at 88%. And the last thing I'd like to go over today is going to be the revenue growth forecast. We've got JP Morgan Chase. They're coming in at 13.4% and they're actually number two on the day. We've got Wells Fargo coming in at 9.6%, Citigroup coming in at 10.3%, Charles Schwab coming in at 0.5%. So this is pretty small here. And then we also have M&T Bank. They're the winner on the day at 23.9% and Service First Revenue Growth Forecast is 5.8%. And let's take a quick look at tip ranks to see what the analysts are looking at on these stocks. First up, we've got JP Morgan and the analyst price target here is $149.86 and that's 16.6% .6 of upside and they have it rated as a strong buy with 11 buys, three holds and zero sells. Next up, we've got Wells Fargo price target 49.71, which is 26.26% .26 of upside. 
Citigroup has a price target of 55.56, which is 17.71% of upside. Then we've got Charles Schwab, price target 77.43, and they're giving it 49.74% of upside, rating it as a moderate buy. We've got M&T Bank with a price target of 167.40, 41.64% upside, six buys, six holds. And then the last one we're looking at here is SFBS. They've got a price target of 72.51 and they're giving them 37.83% of upside. And we only have three analysts covering them, all giving them a hold rating. Bank stocks can offer both risks and rewards, and it's important to carefully consider your options and do your research before investing. The analysts at TipRank see bank stocks with upside of 19 to 50% over the next 12 months. And if I had to pick just one stock to consider for the long term, it would be JP Morgan. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, have a phenomenal rest of your day. Smash that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Grab your free stocks from Moomoo and Webull. And don't forget to try my indicators for free. The links are down below and my trade alerts are in my Discord. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to see you back here on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll see you soon.